Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. We are now into October, which is the second month of the meteorological autumn. But just very, very occasionally, this month can spring a wintry surprise. Even in Southern England, as this photograph illustrates, I took it on October the 29th, 2008 in Regent's Park, central London. And as you can see, there was a sprinkling of snow on the ground. In fact, at the same time, in the Chilterns, snow cover was several centimetres deep. It was a winter wonderland. Now, is there anything remotely like that on the way as we head towards the middle part of October? Well, let's take a look. As usual, I'm going to start with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 1st. At the outset, there's an area of low pressure centred close to East Anglia. It's still bringing out breaks of rain to central and eastern England, as well as a strong easterly wind. Now, as I run the sequence, what we see is that low pressure moves away, and this area of high pressure to the north sinks southwards, and it brings more settled conditions, drier conditions, at least for a time. Because as we head towards the weekend, weather fronts start pushing in from the Atlantic, bringing the risk of outbreaks of rain. But there is uncertainty at the moment about how quickly they will move eastwards across the UK. As I run this sequence, what we see is the unsettled conditions really start to become established in all areas through the weekend. Then into the early part of next week, this low pressure stays close by. It brings an ongoing risk of showers or longer spells of rain. It's a mixed picture. And if I just move out away, look down to the southwest, there's an next hurricane or tropical storm there. And it's a very, very nasty feature indeed. Isobars packed extremely close together, very low central pressure, heavy outbreaks of rain. But at this stage, how that's going to interact with other features in the North Atlantic is very difficult to predict, but it may have an impact on the UK's weather further down the line. If nothing else, what it does is reduce forecast confidence. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. It's showing the jet stream to begin with, the mottled shaded area really tracking south of the UK. The greens over the UK are indicating close to or slightly below average at rare temperatures, but it's a blues there, well to our north, which is where the cold air is. And as I run that, it really is quite a mixed picture through the first week. We see yellows and oranges at times moving across the UK, so warmer air moves in. and. We've got areas of low pressure there at the end of the week, which is keeping that rather mixed theme going, as I've already mentioned. Now, what does all that mean, though, in terms of the conditions that we can expect down at the surface? Just a few charts to illustrate. This is Wednesday. By this point, it's dry in most areas, just a few showers still remaining in the southeast and East Anglia as that low pressure moves away. Temperatures well, 13s there in Northern Ireland and Scotland, a few degrees higher in the south but nothing special. Forwards to Friday, it's dry and temperatures really haven't shifted. Then into the weekend, this is where the rain starts to move in but how quick is it going to move across the UK? Here it is on Saturday just affecting Wales, the southwest and Northern Ireland, western Scotland so it's dry in central and eastern Britain. Then on Sunday, showers or long spells of rain are possible in all areas. But the charts here from the UKV model are for Saturday, and on the right you can see outbreaks of rain are possible really anywhere midday Saturday. On the left as well, it's just worth highlighting the potential for strong winds, maybe uh, gales in western coastal counties. I think the takeaway here is that if you've got anything planned at the weekend, keep up to date with the short range forecasts because those wet conditions could return a little bit sooner or a little bit later. Now, temperatures will be fluctuating and there is a possibility at least of it becoming rather warm for a time towards the end of the first week. Forecast maximum is here from the GFS on the left, around 19 Celsius in England and Wales maybe. On Monday, the ECM on the right shows similar values in East Anglia and the South East. So it could well be warmer towards the end of the first week than it has been in recent days. Rainfall. The ECM and GFS aggregates for days 0 to 5 both show significant rain in central and eastern areas, but I think much of that is falling at the very outset 
as that area of low pressure starts to pull away. It then turns drier in those areas, but you can see ECM is in particular showing rain in the north and west. And conversely, I think much of that is falling towards the end of a five day period as the Atlantic starts to push back in. Moving forward to the naught to 10 day aggregates, totals have increased everywhere. And I just wanted to draw attention to the GFS chart because that's shown the highest values in Southern and Central regions. Once more, illustrating the possibility, at least for as we head into week two, low pressure systems could be tracking further southwards than is typical, leading to the highest amounts of rain in the southern half of the UK. That would be a particular concern because those areas have seen huge totals, at least some parts of those, some parts of the south have in recent days, saturated ground and the likelihood therefore of more flooding if it's correct. ECM on the left though, rainfall distribution on that is more mixed across the UK, but significant in places. Now, in more general terms, do the deterministic models show the same broad scale picture as we head towards the end of the first week, or have they gone off in different directions? Here is the GFS on uh, Tuesday the 8th of October. Low pressure parked close to the northwest of the UK, so unsettled, and this is the point where we could be pulling up some rather warm air from the southwest ahead of it, hence the temperature chart which I showed a little bit earlier. The Canadian model has the low pressure system there, perhaps just a little bit further northwest, but broadly speaking, it's similar, as is the German icon, and it's just worth flagging up there's that ex hurricane or tropical storm, which I've already mentioned to the southwest. Here's the European model, low pressure there, just part of the west, maybe a little bit further south and on one or two of the other ones. And finally, the UK Met Office Global. It's a similar story, low pressure being influential, some warmer air perhaps being pulled up ahead of it in the southeast and east Anglia. But taking them all together, the pitch is fairly clear. It's changeable or unsettled, low pressure being the dominant feature, so showers or long spells of rain. The wettest conditions likely to be in the north and the west at this stage, and the chance of it being somewhat warmer in central and eastern England. But all in all, anywhere could be seen showers or longer spells of rain. Now, does that continue to be the case as we head through week two? As ever at this range, it's just about the general trends and probabilities. I'll start with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. So, upper air temperatures across the top. You can see towards the end of the first week, as I've hinted, they climb. But then, at the start of the second week, they're close to the 30-year norm, at least the mean is a thick purple line. And later on, it is trending downwards. There's an increasing number of runs which are bringing in cooler or colder air, even to the south of the UK. The number of rain spikes along the bottom is interesting. There are quite a few to start the second week. It's rather a wet picture, it's suggesting the likelihood that low pressure will be close by. But towards the very end, the number of spikes there falls away. So there could be a change just at the very end of a forecast period, but that's a long, long way off, of course. Now, two meter temperatures, maximums across the top. They are dipping, so they are following a similar trend to the 850 HPA values which I've just shown. And 11 to 15, which is what the yellow shows, possibly therefore becoming quite chilly through the middle and second half of week two. The overnight lows also dip, lots of green beginning to appear. Six to 10 is what the light green is forecasting and a little bit of a dark green, the ones to fives. But as I've mentioned before, these values are for London, so jump out into the more rural parts of the home counties and you could expect them to be uh, several degrees lower. Up to Manchester, a very similar trend. If anything though, the upper air temperatures are more clearly below the 30 year average than they were on the London chart. The rain spikes fall in a similar pattern. Two meter temperatures, trends here are the same as well. Note though, there's quite a lot of light green showing up during the days. Those are maximum, so 6 to 10 Celsius through the second half of the second week would indicate there could well be quite a cold air mass moving down 
from the north and the overnight lows are also trending downwards as we go through the second week. Glasgow to complete the journey northwest, below average across the top, lots of runs there bringing in quite cold air, we've got a number going down to or even a little bit below, minus uh, 5 Celsius, as I say remember this is at about 1500 meters above sea level. In terms of rain spikes, well all in all it looks similar or even a little bit drier than the London chart. Now that is quite unusual. Usually it's wetter as you head northwest, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. And it follows the same general idea that we could have low pressure systems tracking further south and the north of the UK more likely to be under a cold Arctic air mass. The two meter temperatures for Glasgow, similar trends, downwards, lots of light green there later on, so chilly days. Also notice on the overnight lows, the amount of dark green increases, as does the blue. There's a significant amount of it later on. Those are runs going for temperatures below 0 Celsius. So all in all, it looks like temperatures are going to be trending downwards through the second week. Now the rainfall forecast from the ECM ensemble model, we show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days of week two. The orange shading indicates where it is the highest and you'll see there's a lot of orange there in western England and Wales. Usually the focus of it is on western Scotland and the western isles. That isn't the case here, indicating that the distribution of rain through this period is not likely to be typical. That continues to be the case through the following three days, although by the end the uh, chart on the right perhaps showing a trend towards drier conditions in all parts of the UK. And that's backed up by the mean surface level pressure data table for York, because early on there's lots of green, lots of blue, those are runs going for below average or well below average pressure. But through the second half of week two, the amount of yellow and orange, orange starts to increase in those columns. Higher pressure coming back into the equation, perhaps becoming more settled towards the end. Now, the mean surface level pressure snapshot chart for Friday the 11th of October, generated from the GEFS, runs, has low pressure probably centered across the southern half of the UK, and that high pressure to the west, and that means there's a good chance of that colder Arctic air moving down across the north and that really ties in with what I've been discussing. So perhaps in the north something of a wintry flavour developing through week two. So to summarise, week one it's mostly dry early on but rain returns from the west during the weekend. Uncertainty about the eastwards progression of that, so keep up to date with the short range forecasts. But it looks like an unsettled end to the week and temperatures will be climbing, possibly at least, especially in central and eastern counties, as we pull in some milder air from the southwest. Week two, mixed, but it could well be the wettest in the south because low pressure systems look like tracking further south than is typical. Therefore, in the north, more showery, and with cold Arctic air pushing down across those areas, the risk of snow over high ground could well be increasing, as is the chance of nighttime frosts. And towards the middle part of the second week and beyond, temperatures probably dip generally, so even in the south, and it will be quite cold in the north. So there we have it. A uh, mixed bag of course over a two week period but some indications of wintry conditions affecting the north later on but just very tentative. There could be some sleet or snow over high ground in the northern half UK if that general trend which the computer models are showing turns out to be correct. So keep an eye on how things develop. It could get interesting. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, then if you did, 
please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Then you'll not miss any of my future updates. Also, of course, do remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.